I think the media have made it a fashion thing as opposed to a serious illness. Oh my gosh, you're not meant to feel that tired all the time? This isn't what life is meant to feel like? I think there's still quite a lot of stigma attached to being on a gluten-free diet. Some people just don't believe it's a real thing that, or that it exists. Over the last few years, gluten-free products have become a familiar find on our supermarket shelves. The gluten-free market is predicted to grow by 46% by 2017. But how much do we really know about gluten and the reasons behind the choice to cut it out of our diets? And why is gluten the 21st century enemy? Meet Charlotte, a 21-year-old student who started cutting gluten out of her diet two years ago. Charlotte has celiac disease, a digestive condition where the person has an adverse reaction to gluten. My brother was diagnosed first and I was like, what is this thing? What, what does he have? And then he suddenly turned around and said, you probably have it too, Charlotte, based on like my childhood. So I'd had anemia a lot and I used to get like cramps and things like that in my legs. Um, and the doctor said it was all like due to lots of deficiencies that I had. And they just thought it was just I wasn't eating enough, I wasn't eating well. Um, and so I got tested then, unfortunately. Got tested as I was sort of transitioning into uni, so I had to get retested because they didn't believe the blood test from my old practitioners. Um, and then I had the biopsy. And then yeah, that's pretty much it. But I never had really had any of the symptoms. I just, after starting to eat gluten free, I was suddenly like, Oh my gosh, you're not meant to feel that tired all the time? This isn't what life was meant to feel like? And I felt like I had so much energy every day. <laughs> it was so much better. I could actually go exercising without like wanting to faint within 10 minutes. A gluten intolerance can happen at any age. 36-year-old technician Dan was diagnosed back in 2007, although his condition got worse. I was uh, living in London about five years ago. Um, I was in a lot of pain in my stomach and I went to the GP. I'd had it for a few years previous, but the GP in London suggested that I go to St Thomas's Hospital, uh, see a couple of specialists in that area, um, gastroenterology and a dietitian who put me on the low FODMAP diet, which is an exclusion diet, um, and uh, cutting out various different food groups, one of which was wheat and gluten. Um, and after all those various tests and scans, MRI scans, etc., um, they suggested that I had uh, colitis, uh, 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 IBS, diverticulitis, and various other sort of uh, uh, sort of intestinal and stomach issues. So um, I've sort of stuck to the diet over the last five years, cut out gluten entirely, and that seems to have done the job for me. Eating gluten free is much more than a simple diet. For people like Charlotte and Dan, it's a treatment for a lifelong condition. But gluten can affect people in different ways. In Dan's case, gluten causes inflammation and pain to the large intestine and affects the digestive system. Whereas gluten damages Charlotte's small intestine as she has celiac disease. It affects 1 in 100 people in the UK. So what exactly is celiac disease? Celiac disease is an autoimmune disease. Um, it needs to be diagnosed by your doctor, but it's basically where if somebody ingests gluten, that causes um, basically the lining of the small intestine to stop absorbing nutrients properly. So the diet for somebody with celiac disease is to completely cut out gluten out of their diet so that the small intestine isn't um, agitated by it um, and then their nutrients are absorbed properly. Gluten is a protein found in wheat, barley and rye. It's responsible for the elastic texture of dough, as gluten-free foods tend to break up really easily. The most obvious types of food gluten is found in are carbohydrates, such as cereals, breads and pastas. Although gluten is found in many foods you wouldn't expect to find gluten in, like chocolate, crisps, sauces and even soups. More cafes and restaurants are now adapting their menus to cater for the gluten-free diet. But despite the gluten-free symbol, for someone with a gluten intolerance, it can be quite daunting trying new places to eat. Dawn Hartley was diagnosed with celiac disease and Crohn's disease in 2011 and decided to open up Hartley's coffee and sandwich bar right in the heart of Nottingham. 
I decided to open um, a coffee shop sandwich bar cafe um, because there was a lack of places that I could eat at lunchtime. Um, I'm not one for having sandwiches or anything like that straight out of a fridge anyway. I prefer things to be individually made. Um, I don't like pre-made stuff. So to have somewhere that was um, fresh and could cater for anybody regardless of diet was really important to me. Um, I don't think we should be discriminated against um, just because of what you eat. To avoid cross-contamination, um, all of our staff at the, the coffee shop have been allergy trained and they also go through um, an awareness of cross-contamination. So we have separate area for um, gluten-free um, products to be made. We have a separate grill, um, chopping board, knives, and we have uh, separate butters um, that are used for, um, for gluten-free products. Also with me being the boss and they know how ill I get from being glutened, then they are more aware of um, the consequences of it. I kind of say it feels like someone sort of stabbing you with a knife in your gut and twisting, like period pain but worse. Um, and then you just feel really terrible and you're so, like you're suddenly really, really tired. And then when I've had it really bad, if you eat a lot, um, you can be physically sick and you spend a lot of time on the toilet. <laughs> Um, and it's just terrible and I've had it before where I've spent pretty much a week nearly needing to be in bed because it's just been so bad. I think the media have made it a fashion thing as opposed to a serious illness um, that has serious consequences to it. Um, fortunately I don't pass out or anything like that but I do know people that slightest little bit of gluten can send them into um, shock, can make them collapse, um, they can you know, pass out, all kinds of things. Sometimes a lack of information and knowledge that people have about celiac disease is that they think it's just an upset stomach and it's far more than an upset stomach. If, there, if there's something that I, that, shouldn't, that I shouldn't have eaten, it'll be an immediate effect. Within 20 minutes or so, I'll feel really tired. Quite often, I'll be sick. Maybe 24 hours later, I'll just be in a right mouth. I'll be in agony. Um, and so I'll be taking sort of antispasmodic tablets. I'll be taking paracetamols. Um, sometimes, I mean, the, the worst possible case is I, 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 when I was in hospital for almost a week on a drip because I'd, I'd got an infection. Like, I've just got perforations and stuff in, and sort of internal bleeding. and. That was in a pretty bad way, um, but thankfully that you know they managed to sort all that out now. So uh, it, generally, just now it's diet that's that's um, that I'm able to control it. But not everyone has to avoid the gluten-free diet. Some people choose to. Joe, a student at Staffordshire University, tells us why he decided to give the gluten-free diet a go. I tried a gluten-free diet because I'm already quite a picky eater, so I eat a, not that many types of food. I eat a lot of breads and pastas. And I guess maybe the amount I was eating, I tend to feel quite bloated or sluggish, quite tired a lot. My mum was not eating gluten at the time and she said that she'd felt a lot more active, not as sluggish. So I decided to do it for the same reasons. Cutting out things like gluten and dairy from the diet have become really fashionable um, recently, where people think that if they cut these things out of their diet, they're going to miraculously lose lots of weight and be a lot healthier and live forever. For some people, they may have gluten sensitivity, um, so they find that cutting out gluten helps in reducing symptoms such as bloating or wind. If you don't have any symptoms from eating these things, then it's not really necessary to cut them out of your diet. It's not gonna make you healthier to cut them out if you don't need to. So with the gluten-free market set to grow by nearly half in the next year, and with recent TV advertising, it's clear the awareness of how gluten can affect someone is slowly increasing. Gluten may not be an enemy for all of us, but it still needs to be understood.